This is the day the Lord has made, and we rejoice, and we are glad. We thank God for another opportunity to, you know, to see you today, and for you to see me. This is a blessing. From one week to another, to see ourselves again, it means God has been good. And guess what? It also means that no weapon, and whatever weapon that was formed against you, it failed. Do you hear what I said? Whatever weapon that was formed against you, the fact that I see you and you see me, it means that we are winning. And so for that, we give him all the glory and always we give him all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We come to you from Spirit and Life Family Bible Church in Kantape, Abuja. I believe, God, that in these times, more than ever before, we have to tune ourselves to his voice. We have to tune ourselves to the Lord like never before. With all that is happening around the world, I believe everyone, we are never going to be the same again. One way or another, we are not going to be the same again. Your life is moving either upwards from glory to glory, or it will remain the same. But either way, either way, either way, God has something great in store for you. So listen to what God has for you today. Amen, amen, amen. You know that right now, you know, last week I spoke to us about hope. I spoke to us about having real hope. And I made mention of us through the scriptures that our hope is not based on external factors. Our hope is not based on external realities. Our hope is in someone. And his name is Jesus Christ. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, we can stand on anything he says. We can believe on anything he says. And we can receive everything he says to us. And so I know that whatever it is you are going through today, you will find an answer in today's message in Jesus' name. It is not new news what is happening today. There is so much happening in the world. Every major city right now around the world is being affected by this coronavirus pandemic. It's a major thing that is happening in the world. There's a shift in the world. Everything has been put on hold. Every family, one way or another, if you're living in any city at all around the world, you have been affected by this situation. And many have been more affected than others. There are people who have lost loved ones in their families. There are people who have died because of this virus. There are those who are actually right now sick because of this virus. There are those who have been isolated because of this virus. There are those who have been quarantined because of this virus. And like many and millions of others, there are many who are experiencing a lockdown. All because of this virus. Praise the Lord Jesus. All because of this virus. But I have good news for you today. And that is why I'm here. I will not take for granted what any of you are experiencing right now. For those who have lost family members, I pray for you. Affected in any way, I pray that the Lord comfort your heart. I am so serious in my spirit. I pray that the Lord comfort your heart. For those who are sick right now, in one way or another, you're able to hear me. I declare upon your body the healing power of Jesus. Begin to flow from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. To those of you who are afraid, to those of you who are feeling trouble right now, I believe that there's a word for you today. The topic of my message is this. Double for your trouble. Hallelujah. I said double for your trouble. Yes. That is the good news. All of us have experienced trouble one way or another. All I have stated, we've all been affected one way or another. I have been, I have been locked in my house, you know, locked down in my house for over a week now. All of us, members of the church, everybody has been affected one way or another. Some of you have lost your jobs because of this pandemic. Some of you have lost income because of this pandemic. Businesses have been slowed down. But I have good news for the church today. I have good news for as many who have put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord wants me to tell you today that you will receive double for your trouble. I tell you the truth. You will receive double for your trouble. 
Let's look at the scriptures very quickly. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12. The book of Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12 says it this way. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today, I declare that I will restore double to you. Even today, I declare that I will restore double to you. What does trouble mean? What does that word trouble mean? It's a very powerful word, the word trouble. If you look at the basic dictionary of the, word, the meaning of the word trouble, it's, a very, it's very amazing. Look at this. Trouble means anything that causes difficulty. Anything that causes difficulty. Anything that causes worry. Anything that causes anything that is inconvenient. That is inconveniencing you is trouble. Anything that prevents you from doing something is trouble. This virus has brought trouble to many lives. It has inconvenienced many lives. Another word for the word trouble, it also means to struggle. It means to, to be strained. It means to be stressed. It stressed many people out. Many, many marriages have been affected, good or bad. But one way or another, this has brought trouble to many homes. But I am here not to talk about the virus. I'm here to talk about the good news. And the good news for you today is that double for your trouble is your portion in the name of Jesus. There is, there is a, there's a saying that I used to always hear, you know, um, they would say, when life throws lemons at you, make lemonade, right? I, I think you've heard it before. When life throws lemons at you, throw lemons at you, make lemonade. Do you know what has happened right now? The enemy has thrown a bunch of lemons at us. But guess what? God will make for you lemonade. God will make for me lemonade. Meaning that even though this trouble has come, God is going to make all things work together for good. That at the end of this trouble, we will rise up and be the better for it. We will rise up and receive double for our trouble. It's a guarantee because the word of God has declared it so. That whatever the enemy meant for evil in this moment, Whatever loss you have incurred, whatever sickness has affected your body, whatever relationship has been affected, whatever contract, whatever it is that has suffered because of this pandemic, because of this evil, God's word is promising you. I'm not the one promising you. The word of God is promising you that you will get double for your trouble. Remember, the Bible says all things work together for good. The Bible doesn't say all good things work together for good. The Bible didn't say all bad things work together for good. It says all things. Meaning that God has the power, God has the ability to take both the good and both the bad and make it work together for good. And that is who I put my trust in today. That is who I trust. And that's who I believe that you are trusting also as you listen to the sound of my voice. When God makes something, he does it with style. He does it well. He restores trouble. He restores double for your trouble. God will restore double to you in the name of Jesus. I'll say it again. God will restore double to you in the name of Jesus. Scripture is full of God restoring people better than the way they were before. It's full of it. He's always restoring double for trouble. Whenever the Israelites lost something, the Bible always makes a point that they got double for it. Whenever the Israelites, remember the Israelites in the scriptures, how they were in bondage and slavery for years. The Bible makes the point that when they came out of that challenge, when they came out of that trouble, they left Egypt, number one, the Bible says, none of them were feeble. None of them were sick. They came out strong. No man's life was lost. And secondly, they came out with gold. They came out with silver. They were restored. It was from that wealth that the Israelites were able to build that calf and do all of these things they did. But I am here to tell you, we are in troubled times right now. Troubled times. There is no need sugar coating it. We are in troubled times. Things may get worse. Things may get better in a week from now. We don't know. But one thing we know is the surety of God's word. One thing we know is that this word of God is settled in heaven. I don't know whether the government's word is settled. I don't know what the news is saying today is settled. But one thing I know, that God's word is settled in heaven. I either believe it or I don't. 
And because it's settled in heaven and it has been guaranteed by the blood of Jesus, everything, every promise God says, it must come to pass. And so I can boldly declare to you what God's word is saying, that you, that God will restore to you double for your trouble. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Mm. Uh, let me, sh you know the story of Job in the Bible. In the book of Job chapter 42, the Bible makes a profound, gives, gives us an example of a man who experienced a lot of trouble. Amen. He experienced a lot of anxiety and worry. Job loses his whole family. His business, done. I mean done. Everything done. And this may be the situations that some people are experiencing right now. This may be the situation. Some people have lost their jobs because, you know, the company cannot pay because nobody's buying anything. Everybody's in their homes. Some people have lost countless income from their business, just abruptly shutting down. Only God knows what you are experiencing. Only God knows what my neighbor is experiencing. And I don't, I don't, I would never put myself to say I know what you're experiencing. But one thing I know is that God's word is sure. And because God's word is sure, and when I look at his track record, he has a way of restoring to his people what the enemy stole from them. He has a way of always bringing back, not the same thing, but more than they can ever imagine. Hallelujah. And that is what you shall receive in Jesus' name. So when you look at the story of Job, the Bible says Job loses everything. And then in Job, his wife, his wife tells him to curse God and die because of all that he's experiencing. His wife tells him, curse God. This God you are serving, where is he? I know many, as a pastor, I know many who have asked God questions about what is happening. Why would you allow this happen? Where is God? Where is God when coronavirus happened? Where is God when my mother died? Where is God when my father got sick? Where is God when I lost my job? Where is God? Where is God? Child of God, those are legitimate questions, I would say. But the thing is this. Your, that question, when you ask God that question, that is not, the answer you get is not what you need. You asking God that question is never going to give you a solution. But it's how you respond to God in that moment is where your solution will come from. Because you asking, God, where were you? God, where were you? Cursing God out, blaming God for everything. You will not get your answer in that environment of accusation before God. No man gets the answer from God that way. No man. Search your scriptures. No man gets his damn answer from God by accusing God of doing evil. But every person gets a response back from God when they respond back to God in a different question, in a different attitude. When they respond to God in faith, in spite of what is happening. And that was what Job experienced. Job could have cursed God. But the Bible says that Job refused he refused to open his mouth. He, he refused to open his mouth and insult God. Instead, he responded to, go, to, to God in faith. Look at what the Bible says in Job chapter 42. Job chapter 42 verse 10. The Bible says it this way. And the Lord restored Job's losses. Woo! Not the government. Not the government. The government can never restore your losses. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Hallelujah. Mm. I, want, I want the God type of restoration. That's what I want. I have lost some things. I mean, you know, everyone has lost something. So you, can't, you cannot put down what somebody else has lost compared to your own. Everyone's loss is different. But everyone has lost something, one way or another. Time. Children are home. Instead of being in school, they've lost a bit of time. Businesses have shut down. They lost some income. Churches, people can gather. People are losing time. People are losing different things. But those who put their trust in the Lord, the Lord will restore to them the losses they have incurred. That is the word of the Lord. 
If God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever, it means that the same God that restored to Job his losses when he prayed, not when he accused God, not when he blamed God, not when he castigated God and made God look like a, like a joke. I've been serving God. It's like, a, it's, can you imagine this? It's like me as a pastor. Telling God this, you know, I've been serving God all these years. I've been a pastor. Why would God allow them to close my church? Why would God allow this? Who are you to, why, why, would, why do you think that you would get what you want from the Lord by accusing him? Think about this. If you are a parent, if your child wants something from you, the last way they will get anything from you is, from, is accusing you of something. If my child comes to me and begins to tell me, Daddy, it's because of you I failed. It's because of you this is not working. It's because of you. It's because of you. Do you think I will not put my hand in my pocket and say, oh, my son, it's true. I beg, take. Mm -mm, it's never going to happen. Mm -mm. No parent will respond to accusation. But if the child recognizes that I know what has happened, but they still go to daddy, they still go back to, money, to, 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 to mom and begin to acknowledge their parents for the things they have already done for them and thank them for the things they have already done for them, I tell you the truth, you will get a different response. So instead of going to God and accusing God how bad he is and how he's not doing this and why is he allowing this, child of God, I challenge you. Go to God and thank him for the things that he has already given to you before coronavirus came. Thank him that you, are, you had the ability to even have a job before you lost it. Thank him that you have the ability to go to school before school closed. Thank him for the ability that you were able to have a church before the church closed. Thank him that you were able to thank him what happened before coronavirus happened. And I tell you the truth, you will instigate. You will start a process of restoration in your life. If Job had accused God of everything bad, I tell you the truth, he will remain the same. He will still remain a downcasted, broke man. No family, no business. But Job chose to respond in faith. He prayed, and the Bible says, the Lord restored Job's losses. My God, whenever I read that, he restored Job's losses. Praise the Lord Jesus. I want to let you understand something here. It is what, what everyone is experiencing is very real. But the word of God is more real. It's more real. Let me use myself as an example as, as a pastor. You know, not just as a pastor, but as a child of God. Because I'm first a child of God before I'm a pastor. I have learned more than ever before that my only hope there's only two ways I can respond in this life. Two ways. I can either respond in trouble and allow the trouble overwhelm me and, 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 and fall into the trap of what the trouble is bringing because everyone is experiencing pressure in different ways. Or I can choose to believe that this word of God I've been preaching for years, is it real or is it just for show? Because that's what Christianity has come to right now. Coronavirus is testing everybody's faith. Those who say God is their God, this is the time to prove it. Those who, those who have been playing church, this is the time it will show. This situation is sifting the environment. It's sifting the faith from the faithless. It's sifting the believer from the non-believer. It's sifting. Everybody's been sifted. Meaning, you, know, you know what sifting means? You know, when you want to... I remember when my... I've seen her, you know, my grandma, when she's making rice. The whole rice is in a big, is in a big uh, tray. And she's, she's shaking it, shaking it. When she shakes it, then the shaft... She, what is she doing? She's not blowing the rice away. The real deal will remain in the plant, will, will remain in the tray. But that which is fake, that which is fickle, it will blow away. This virus is doing amazing things. At the same time, it's also doing destructive things. It's doing amazing things. It's doing destructive things. But at the end of the day, no matter what it does, for the child of God, there is double for your trouble. Because the word of God is saying so. 
Ah, pastor, what gives you that confidence that there's double for my trouble? I have no confidence in myself. What the word says. What the word says. And I tell you the truth, child of God, as you put your trust in him, just like Job's losses were restored, so your losses shall be restored in the name of Jesus. I will say it again. So your losses shall be restored in the name of Jesus. Restoration is for the believer. Restoration is for the child of God. Restoration is what we have in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, no man loses anything. In Christ Jesus, nobody, no man fails. Because if I fail, it means that Jesus failed. I can't fail because Jesus did not fail. And so let's go back to that scripture. Come on. Follow me again. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 12. Watch this. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Oh, I love that. I am a prisoner of hope. Tell yourself, say, I'm a prisoner of hope. You better be a prisoner of hope. You can, we are all prisoners to something. You're either a prisoner of worry. You're a prisoner of fear. You're a prisoner of hope. A prisoner of faith. A prisoner of righteousness. A prisoner of sin. We are all prisoners to something. And how do you know if you're a prisoner of something? What occupies your heart the most? What occupies your time the most? Let's you know what you are being, what you are, what you are a prisoner of. But the Bible says the child of God, those who are called by God, we have been declared as prisoners of hope. Hallelujah. You've been declared as a prisoner of hope. Bible hope. When we talk about Bible hope, Bible hope is not fickle. It's not, it's not, I hope that things get better. I don't hope that things get better. I know that things get better because I expect it to get better. That is Bible hope. Bible hope expects that good would come out of this situation. This is one of the things I always say to myself. Again, this is, I, I, man, it's amazing how you build yourself up. I tell myself, no matter how this thing ends, I'm coming out on top. That's my declaration. Anyhow, I'm coming out on top financially. I'm coming out on top in my family. I'm coming out on top in my marriage. I'm coming out on top in my ministry. I'm coming up on top with my children, with my health. That is my declaration. Why? Because my hope is in Christ Jesus. The Bible declares that I am a prisoner of this hope. Oh, I love this hope. The Bible calls it hope that does not disappoint. And because I have this hope, I can expect double for my trouble. Praise the Lord Jesus. I want to encourage you today. I want you to know that whatever you have lost, I declare in the name of Jesus, restoration for you in Jesus' name. I want you to do this. I want to, I want to give you this assignment because I trust God that next time when we meet again, I'm going to continue in this teaching. I want to give you this assignment. Everything you think you have lost, write it down. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I just received that. Anything you think you have lost, financially, materially, whatever it is you have lost, because of this virus, write it down as a child of God. Because you know what? The enemy is going to pay for it. He will pay for it. He has debts to settle. He will pay for it. And so I want to encourage you, child of God. I want to encourage you listening to me right now. You will receive double for your trouble. Write down what you have lost. Thank you. Write down what you have lost. Write down what you have lost, says the Lord. Write down what you have lost. Write down what you have lost. Income, time, write it down. As you put your faith in Jesus at this moment, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. Your name is restoration. There is no loss in you. I pray for you listening to the sound of my voice. I pray for you also who have not put their faith in Jesus Christ. I declare that today, I hope you give him space in your heart. As you listen to the sound of my voice, the Bible says that if you believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, you confess him with your mouth, that he rose from the dead, 
you will be saved. Don't play games with your life, child of God. Don't play games. Because God is after you. He's after you because he loves you. He's after you to bless you tremendously with peace, with hope, with joy. He's after you. And so, Father, I thank you for this opportunity to speak to your sons and to your daughters. I pray that as you hear the sound of my voice, you will not turn away from the Lord, but you will turn to the Lord. I pray that as you hear the sound of my voice, that faith is stirred up in your heart. I pray that you receive this message today. Double for your trouble. I don't know what you have been through. I can never know what you have been through. But there's one person that knows exactly what every one of us is going through. The Bible says that he sympathizes with us, Jesus Christ. He, ex he empathizes with us. He knows exactly how I feel. He knows exactly how you feel. Let faith rise in your heart right now. Let hope rise in your heart right now in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so, Father, I thank you for all those who are listening to me right now. I pray for your home. I call your home blessed. I call your home secured. I call your home full of joy and full of peace. I stand against any form of strife in your home, in your church, in your life. I stand against any form of fear, of stress, of worry. I rebuke all of these elements away from your home and away from your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for testimonies. Thank you for great news. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please write me. My email is on the screen. If you have a testimony or something, whatever, just let me know how you're doing. Because I care about you. And I know that with this, in this situation, either way, I will come up on top. And you will come out on top. Because we win. There is no way I can be seated in heavenly places and, and lose. It can't happen. Because we win. God bless you. Till next time. Have a blessed and very fulfilled day. In Jesus' name, amen.